Well, the government is planning to scrap cancer waiting time targets, and that's left some charities saying that they are now deeply worried. And it comes as the waiting list uh, just keeps getting longer. More than 7.5 million people in England were waiting for treatment in June. And we're now joined by the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay. Good to speak to you this morning. I know that you want to talk about this new idea of having information about smoking and warnings on the inside of cigarette packets. Obviously, anything that discourages people starting smoking and encourages them giving up is a good thing. But with them already hidden away, with no advertising, with them expensive, when we're in the middle of a junior doctor's strike and with cancer charities concerned that you're scrapping targets for people to be seen, targets that we weren't even meeting anyway, it does feel a little bit like you're trying to distract us rather than tackle what's really frightening people, if I may say. Well, well let's, let's deal with that in turn. So, in terms of with the cigarette inserts, we know that uh, the biggest cause of cancer is smoking uh, and that many people that are smoking want to give up. And, and the proposal there, the consultation, is about learning from best international practice. So, in Canada, for example, they use the inserts. The data that's come out of Canada suggests it's helped empower smokers to give up by signposting to them where to go. So, so it's one of a number of things that we're doing, but it's right that we look internationally at what steps others are taking. Oh, smoking here is at the lowest ever rate. Uh, a lot of progress has been made, but we want to learn from what the Canadians are doing, and that's why we're consulting on that. Now, in terms of the separate consultation that we've had on cancer targets, uh, which you're quite right, is a much bigger issue. Uh, to be very clear, this is about saying what is it that clinical leaders in the cancer field uh, want the government to do. Any proposals uh, taken forward uh, as and when they're announced will be in conjunction with leading cancer charities. So, so it's about responding. The consultation has been about responding to leading clinical figures uh, and working with the leading yeah. cancer charities. And, yeah. and, and that's what any proposal will take on board. Indeed. And, of course, uh, one of the, the, the ideas that could be positive about getting rid of targets is that you have this, this squeeze in the system where GPs refer, they have to do it within two weeks, and suddenly a whole block comes in and they can't see everybody quickly enough and some people might need treatment more urgently and some less urgently. So, obviously, we can see that there should be some debate about that. However, the fundamental is everybody knows, all the cancer charity knows, early diagnosis is key, seeing Absolutely. somebody quickly is key, whatever cancer you've got, and, indeed, funding the kit and the people and the staff that have to deal with it is the solution, not removing targets. Well, I absolutely agree with you, and that's why, since 2010, the, the cancer workforce has increased by more than 50%. It's why we're investing £2.3 billion in 160 community diagnostic centres, so we can get the tests and scans not just quicker to patients, but much more accessible to them, so it's easier for patients to access those tests So why are the junior doctors still on strike, then, saying that, that, that staffing pressure is too much? Of course, pay is part of it, but patient care is also a big concern. They're going to continue there. We're in one now. They're going to continue it at the end of August and on into September. Well, I mean, that's a, a separate issue, but the reason... Well, it's related, is that, though, isn't it? Of, of course, and, and the reason is that they're demanding a 35% uh, pay rise. The government's offered 10.3% to those junior doctors uh, starting at the entry level uh, and an average of 8.8% uh, to junior doctors uh, across the board. And, and that's accepting in full the recommendations of the independent pay review body. And I think for many of your listeners, they will hear that 10.3%, the average of 8.8%. And in the context of our commitment also to bringing uh, inflation down, we'll see that it is fair that we uh, accept the recommendation. We have an independent process through the pay review bodies, uh, and that's what we've done. 35% well, uh, uh, is not affordable, uh, and we've been very clear with the junior doctors uh, about that. Okay, Mr. Barkley, you've been clear on that. Um, well, look, you are the, the designated government media minister of the morning, so if you wouldn't mind taking off your health hat and put, maybe putting a tin hat on, because we have to talk about the boats. I mean, on Saturday, 500 asylum seekers crossed the Channel. Six drowned, as you know, when, when a boat sank. Um, and the bar just had to be emptied uh, because uh, of Legionnaire's disease. Uh, this government policy of deterrence to deter the crossings, it's a complete busted flush, isn't it? It's just not working. 
Well, we recognise there's more that needs to be done, but progress is being made. The number of crossings this year is lower than last year. If I look at, for example, Albanians, uh, the returns agreement that the Home Office has been in place has led to a 90 per cent uh, reduction in Albanians coming across on small boats. Uh, the French authorities have stopped 40 per cent more uh, boats this year than last year. But you're absolutely right, more needs to be done, not least given the £6 million that the, the British taxpayer, your viewers, are paying in hotels each day, uh, which is the current cost. And we're that's also, why we're, we're also there's a range a, of things. We're also paying a small fortune to the French. And most of our viewers think that we're just basically being taken for mugs because most of our viewers feel, and we've had this all through the morning, messages from, from people watching the show, that the French are simply going through the motions in stopping these boats from leaving and trying to turn them back, but actually they'd rather they came here than stayed in the Pas de Calais. Are we being taken for mugs? Are we paying for some kind of cooperation that's not happening? But well, we need to do a range of things, and, and uh, one of the things is, is try and disrupt the criminal gangs upstream, not just in France, uh, but where they're sourcing their engines, where they're sourcing their boats, uh, as they're moving people uh, into northern Europe. So more work upstream, which we're doing. Yes, can, uh, the you ask, returns... can you answer the question, please? Are the, are the French doing what they should be doing, given all the money that we're giving to them, to try and stop these boats crossing, or are they turning a blind eye? It's, it's a simple question. Well, I, I, th I think it's in our interest to work cooperatively. Uh, with the French. I think we'll have more success doing that than if we don't. But it's just one are of a number of things. About speaking are they turning out a blind them? eye? Are they turning a blind eye? Uh, no, there's, they've stopped 40% uh, more boats this year than last year. Uh, but it's one of a number of things that we're doing, and that's why we're also committed to our Rwanda policy. It's why we're looking at bringing the cost of hotels down. And it's worth remembering that Labour have voted against everything that the government is doing. And one of the reasons it's been difficult to make the progress we have is because of the amount of opposition we've had from Labour resisting the measures that we wanted to do in Parliament. Why so we are taking... French, why can't the French bust the gangs who are, who, are, who are running these operations? It seems, to most people looking at it, there are very few arrests, very few charges brought. These gangs seem to be operating their people smuggling activities virtually with impunity. Well, it's uh, an international problem. It's not just an issue in Northern Europe. There's also challenges, as you know, in Italy uh, and in terms of the Mediterranean. So this is a much wider problem. There's no single answer in terms of the solution. There's a range of things we're doing. We're making progress in terms of the overall number of crossings is lower this year than last year. Uh, countries such as Albania, our returns agreement has had a dramatic impact, a 90% reduction. But I absolutely accept we need to do more. That's what the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary are committed to doing. That's why before the Supreme Court in November, the Rwanda policy, which we think will have a, an important deterrent effect, uh, and we're pushing that. But these are things that the Labour well, Party Point, isn't it? it's, not having, it's not having a deterrent effect at all. And in fact, I'm sure you've seen in today's uh, Daily Telegraph front page story, um, a leaked memo from the Home Office in March predicts that this is going to go on at exactly this level until 2028, another five years of this. Well, again, I mean, it's long-standing practice. Ministers don't comment on, on leaks. But I think it is important to draw a distinction between having a facility that might be available for a period of time and saying that it would need to be used for that period of time. But the point is, we are we recognise we need to do more. That's why we're committed to the policy on Rwanda and processing there. It's why we're trying to get the cost of hotels down. At £6 million a day, it is far too high. It's why we're working with countries on a return agreement, such as with Albania, but with a number of other countries as well. We're working in partnership with European colleagues as to what they can do. There's a range of things we're doing to disrupt the criminal gangs. Right. Well, I wish we had more time with you, Mr Barclay, but I'm afraid uh, we're out of time and you've got another interview to go to. Uh, thank you for, for that period.